Hi guys, Steve Mike back with the Blu-ray update. Um, this is the third time I've tried to record this, so hopefully this one will come out and the camera won't stop recording after 12 seconds, like it has been. So I'm going to try and get through them quickly. We have War of the Worlds, which I picked up today. Um, £10 from Blockbuster, see so stickers still on there. Um, really, really enjoyed this film. I don't know why people hate it so much. Saw it in the cinema, haven't really seen it since. Um, has a world-class um, surround sound soundtrack. Um, it's DTS Master Audio 5.1. If you have it too loud and your system's not set up properly, it will damage it. No two ways around it. The LFE response in this is insane. Um, but if you have a good system you want to look it out, pick it up. I think it's a tense, well-made thriller. I think there are moments in it which just gripped my hand into the armrest. I just loved it. So. Well worth a pick up at £10. Um, I've got to rebuy Same Private Ryan. I was going to do it at the same time from Amazon, but I went to the cinema today and the blockbuster is near the cinema, so I popped in to see what they had and I thought tenner, well worth it. Next we have the HMV exclusive um, Stillbook. This Stillbook is exactly the same as you can get in Best Buy and I think Future Shop did it as well in Canada. Um, with this series, I saw them all in the cinema. First one I thought was alright, not great, but alright. Second one I think it was one of the worst films ever made. Third one I liked, thought it was pretty good fun. Um, mainly due to a decent director being attached. Um, and then I saw Resident Evil Afterlife. Now, I don't own the rest, mainly because I wanted the still books, and I thought HMV, because they were doing this, would do the other matching still books. They haven't, so I thought it was fun. I don't know whether 3D helped, because I saw it in 3D. I haven't watched this yet, I um, really must. Um, you have the executioner on the back there and inside. Um, yeah, it wasn't anything demanding. It looked quite nice. I think Paul Anderson peaked with um, shopping though. I thought Soldier was okay. Event Horizon was more of a fluke than anything. Um, actually, you know, I like Death Race. Death Race was quite fun. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like it. I like the Steelbook. I really wish that they bring out the rest of them over here because they've always got tracked on the Best Buy ones and they're getting quite rare now. Um, but a fun movie and I'd say well worth a watch if you haven't seen them. Um, next one is one I regret buying. Um, I only bought it a week after, week before last in Tesco I think for 12 quid. Mainly because in the States there's a um, 10th anniversary edition coming out I think next week. Um, it has a remastered picture and this picture apparently has a lot of problems. Um, there's a, I think a combing error on it or something, and basically the new one's remastered, and this has power speed up as well, which you shouldn't have in Blu-ray, but the soundtrack is sped up. We have Memento, um, comes with a slipcase. I mean, I just bought it because it was cheap and it would complete my Nolan collection, but um, I don't know, I think it's annoying. It's good that I didn't pay too much for it because I'm going to have to buy the the better version basically if it's region free. It has got all the extras, it's got the director's commentary and the other stuff on there which is, you know, I think well worth picking up if the other one's region locked. But it depends what the picture looks like. I haven't given it a spin yet. I would eventually so it does at least have some decent extras on there. But I don't know, it's kind of a pain that we still get these substandard releases in the UK. We really need to step up and get sort of a unified, decent releasing structure. But the problem is, I think Sony's putting it out in the US and it's a different distributor, so that's normally where the problems arise. But I think it's, you know, I don't know. We'll have to see what it looks like when I put it in. Next we have two that I bought and a two for 20 deal in HMV. First one I already own um, on Blu-ray. It's the first Blu-ray release one of the first Blu-ray releases that Lionsgate put out. It was MPEG-2. It didn't look or sound oh, excuse me, all that great. It had its moments, but it didn't really have a lot of extras on there, so I double dipped for Stargate, the Ultimate Edition. Not a fan of the series, not a fan of any of the series. Um, just really liked the film. I saw it in the cinema when it first came out. And I thought it was a great little movie. Um, I think it's fun. Um, the remastered picture is a lot better. Um, it's got 7.1 DTS HD remixed audio, which does sound quite good actually. It did, it did come alive a little bit better than the old. I think it was a 6.1 track that was on the old um, Lionsgate disc. 
It's got new extras as well. It's got casting featurettes, um, opening the gate, making the movie, picture in picture, Stargate Ultimate Knowledge, Never Foreseen Gag Reel. So it's got new bits on there. So even if you have a decent version with decent extras, it does have new new um, content on there. Um, I think it's worth picking up. It's got both versions. It's got the director's cut and the theatrical cut as well, before I see this branching. So I think it's, you know, worth a punt. Um, it did look good. The problem is they were selling it on, I think, Amazon or Play for like a fiver. I found out the day after I bought it, which is sod's law, really. Um, it didn't go for the extras, actually, on the other two. So we'll just quick run down. Resident Evil has um, Get Inside the Creative Process with BD Live. Feed Your Appetite with Blu-ray Exclusives, Undead Vision Picture and Picture Track, Delete Scenes and Outtakes, and five additional behind-the-scenes featurettes. So not a lot for a modern movie, but to be honest, I just bought it because it was filmed in HD and it probably looks quite good on Blu-ray, due to being a Sony transfer. War of the Worlds has a lot of recycled stuff, so Revisiting the Invasion, Spielberg and the original War of the Worlds, Characters the Family Unit, HG Wells Legacy, Designing the Enemy, Pre-Visualization, Production Diary, Scoring War of the Worlds, We Are Not Alone, Galleries, and Theatrical Trailer, which is the only thing in HD, so you can tell they're legacy extras. Um, the next one I was going to buy for ages, it was really expensive. I really like the film I saw it in the cinema, um, haven't seen it since. But just waited, waited, waited. It was originally available in a two disc, I think, which I think the second disc, someone correct me if I'm wrong, was just a digital copy. So I picked up Sherlock Holmes and the 2 for 20. Really like it, big fan of Guy Ritchie's stuff. Um, more his later stuff than his early stuff. It's got maximum movie mode, which is always good fun, and Watchmen had it and Cop Out had it, where the director walks on and it all zooms out and looks really cool. Um, picture and picture, storyboard comparisons, still galleries, focus points, timeline. Sherlock Holmes reinvented. See how Guy Ritchie and Rob Down Jr. reinterpret the Master Sleuth and how Danny prepares for the role. Um, haven't watched it again yet. Like I said, I really liked it. I really picked it up because the sequel's coming out soon. So I just wanted to rewatch it again and see if I still liked it. But I, I really enjoyed it. I do like Robert Downey Jr. I always have. I think Chaplin showed that he could be one of the greatest actors on this planet. And I think he's he's well deserved his comeback now since Iron Man. Next we have two. One I bought on Amazon from an Amazon seller, mainly because Movie Time didn't actually have it in stock, which was kind of weird. Because the next one after this I bought from Movie Time. And you'll see why it's weird in a second. We have El Mariachi and Desperado, the Robert Rodriguez double feature. Now this was released previously as a double feature, if I can get it out from under the stack. Yeah, like that. One of the first DVDs I ever bought. Flip a disc with El Mariachi on one side and Desperado on the other side. El Mariachi looked like ass, absolute ass. Um, it's 16mm, so it's never going to look amazing, but I think things like The Evil Dead and Texas Chainsaw showed how good 16mm can look on Blu-ray. This looks a lot better, like a hell of a lot better. Um, I haven't watched a lot of it, I'll watch a quick flick through um, El Mariachi. Desperado looks like an old HD transfer, which it probably is to be fair. Um, it did sound the outside remastered for HD, but I think that could just mean El Mariachi. At least not a flipper anymore. Um, if I'm honest, would I have preferred, you know, one each film on a separate disc? Yes, but would El Mariachi have sold out Desperado? Probably not. Um, has all the extras that are previous on there, and it's got Blu-ray exclusive, The Cutting Room, Create Your Own Video and Share It by BD Live, so no new extras. Which is a shame because Robert Rodriguez does do good extras, and it'd be nice to see some, something decent um, that was new put on there, but... I still have hope of a Faculty Special Edition, I think it's a really underrated film. Um, so I really have to pick it up, up there, put it in and give it a proper spin. But I want to watch, um, do like a back-to-back -back marathon. Because I want to see what the um, DTS HD soundtrack sounds like for Desperado, because it was really good on Laserdisc and DVD, so hopefully that would be good. And the next for movie time is Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Which is, like I say, weird because... They didn't have that in stock, they only had this. This was shot on very early, I think it was um, Genesis cams, or the Sony Panavision cams. Um, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, I hope they do. Um, which were bought, used off Steven, not Steven Spielberg, um, George Lucas. Um, I think it's an ambitious film, I think it has its issues. Um, 
it's not a bad film. It doesn't get shouldn't get the bad rap that it does get. Um, I haven't given this a spin, like I said, I quick, quickly threw it in just to see what it looked like, and I don't think it looked amazing. I think it seems to said remastered of Blu-ray on the front. I think it's still an old transfer. Um, no new extras apart from the cutting room thing again. Um, but it'd be quite cool to watch all three back to back and see how they stand up. And you know, it's Rob Rodriguez. He never really makes anything that bad, I don't think. Um, next, we have one that I watched on Saturday and absolutely loved. We have is it Gareth Edwards? Gareth Edwards Monsters. Um, Build as a monster movie is not a monster movie. It's more like an art house film with monsters sort of in the background occasionally. Um, think of it's District Nine without the budget or the effects. Um, the effects aren't that bad in it. It's got a pretty good 7.1 DTS HD soundtrack that sounds pretty damn good actually for its budget. I think it's only like eight hundred thousand dollars. I'm not sure if there's out in America yet. I think it comes out this week. I got it early from movie time as always. Um, I think it was only like 14 quid, so it was well worth picking up. Um, I think El Mariachi Desperado at 11.99. And Mexico was 14 quid for movie time. I say that was an Amazon sale, the other one. Um, has got decent extras, got commentary. Um, Look at monsters, behind the scene of monsters, the edit, visual effects, interview with Gareth Edwards, and one of his short films as well. It comes with a digital copy, which is a download version, but it does work with iTunes, so it's slightly better than the Warner version. Um, really, really enjoyed this, thought it was great, but don't go expecting a monster movie because it's not what it's about. Go expecting a merchant ivory film set in the jungle. You know, it's all talky, but it's really, really good, so I would recommend that highly. And last but not least, we have one of my favourite films of last year. Um, this UK version of Ben Affleck's The Town. Um, comes with a digital copy. And um, has both versions, the extended and theatrical cut. I haven't seen the extended cut yet. I've only seen the theatrical cut. It also comes with a DVD version. And once for Warner, it's, the digital copy is actually on the disc, which is good. Um, it's DTS HD Master Audio and... I'm amazed, uh, I'd be amazed if it doesn't sound amazing because it sounded beyond amazing in the cinema. Um, one problem with the American version, I haven't checked this yet and I will check it in a minute in a PC drive. Instead of seamlessly branching the two versions of the film, they just put two versions of the film on there. Which is stupid because it took up too much space, the bitrate suffered and Warner's normal filtering it doesn't look amazing, it looks okay from what I've seen. It's not one of the worst discs, don't get me wrong. Like people do in the apocalypse, when I said about apocalypse now, it's not a bad disc, it's just not as good as it could be. Seeing this branching is the way forward. It wasn't DVD time, why they ditch it, I don't know. But it's good to see Warner moving away from um, Dolby True HD into DTS HD. I'm not a fanboy, but it'd be nice to have a unified thing between everyone. And they are moving away from VC1 codec into um, AVC. Um, this is one of the holdovers, I believe. But still, you know, I'll still give it a spin. I'll still love it because it was one of my favourite films of last year. So, there we go. Um, I imagine there'll be a few more because there's quite a bit out next week. So I'll probably do an update pretty soon. Even though I keep saying that and never do. So until then, do you like saying see you next time?